Welcome, welcome, patrons, both new and old. I'll get to my sincere thanks about that in a moment, but for now, let's just hit the ground running and start talking about the taint. The Blight Disease. As I have mentioned in my video, History of the Blights, there are two ways the word blight is used. The previous video talks about blight as an event, so let's go over blight as a disease. So first, what is it? This is almost a theory, as it's never really stated to be this, but it seems to be some sort of bacteria-like substance. The taint is a physical thing that, once in your body, begins the process of turning you into one of the darkspawn. It's described that just touching something that is blighted will not give you the taint, but rather it has to get into your bloodstream. It could be eaten, get into your eyes, or perhaps a cut that you may have gotten. Darkspawn themselves is said to only be able to spread the blight through their fluids, be that blood, vomit, or otherwise. It also seems that the blight has its own physical form. In the novel The Calling, it describes the taint's spreading in a cavern. Spidery tendrils of black rot along with a shiny film that covered everything like oil. Duncan touched it, curious, and found that the film wasn't actually wet. It was dry with a texture like snakeskin. Did you ever wonder what the black patches on the sand in the distance of the western approach was? It's oceans of the blight growth, left over from the second blight that have yet to go away. Eventually, this small amount of taint can actually grow into larger sacks, like the ones seen in the deep roads in Dragon Age Origins. Infection. So what can be infected by the blight? It's stated by Bianca that the blight only infects living things, which is why red lyrium is so meaningful, because that would make lyrium alive. And in, here I'm going to go a bit on a tangent here. This fact is stated other places in OK, but what about that attainted alluvian? If you have played either Daedalus Shelf Origin in Dragon Age Origins, or even talked to Meryl in Dragon Age 2, you know that there is an alluvian that is tainted. But how? It's acted like the blight only infecting living things is common knowledge, but people who interact with the alluvian don't consider it being tainted an unusual event. Do they mean that it's actually covered in the blight fungus and needs to be cleaned off? And is it really that hard to scrape off that Meryl needs to use blood magic? Or is an alluvian alive, perhaps made of lyrium? Which, okay, those sound like reasonable explanations, but what about glitter dust? Glitter dust is one of the crafting resources in Dragon Age 2, known as a makeup ingredient that caused rashes and even death, which is why it's now in a recipe for grenades. Its codex entry says, if gathered from caves where darkspawn dwell, the rock produces a powder known as tainted glitter dust. So is glitter dust alive too, or is it just covered in taint goo? Oh, <laughs> that, okay, <laughs> taint goo. Anyway, I, I know I'm being nitpicky here, but I'm only trying to prove a point. It seems that it's not as simple as only living things can catch the blight. Perhaps only living things can be affected by the blight, but non-living things can still be touched by it, covered in it, and spread it. And this is why I like to think of the taint as bacteria. Bacteria only infects living things, but you can still catch a cold from touching a doorknob or sharing makeup. Perhaps the taint itself is a tiny living organism. Blight symptoms. So it seems that some people are naturally more immune to the blight than others, as some are killed quickly while others take some time. Those infected begin to lose hair, grotesque sores develop on the body, and they begin to hear whispers and songs in their head. People who get this for a long often become cannibals, attacking anyone in sight and said to be driven mad with pain. In game, we also see black tendrils on the face of those who are infected, and their eyes become milky and their skin paler. Those who have been affected with the blight to this point of losing themselves are called ghouls. Think Hespeth, Tamlin, Ruck, Adria, and Larias. Another interesting point is that it seems ghouls can be possessed, as seen in Sophia Dryden. Cure for the Blight Other than the Grey Warden joining, there are other ways to delay the effects of the Blight, as seen in the Dalish Elf Origin and with Felix, who is tainted but whose life is being prolonged through magic and other unknown ways. In the novel The Last Flight, Isia is able to save the last of the Griffins by taking the taint out of the eggs and into herself, because something about the embryonic stage of life does not give the Blight enough to hold on to. Whatever this means, I'm not exactly sure though. But overall, there is no known cure for the taint. Okay, so the Mabari in Dragon Age Origins is cured of the Blight, which just doesn't make any goddamn sense. None. People in Dragon Age Origins say that there is no cure for the Blight, except for the Kennel Master, who is giving the quest. I have a ton of thoughts on this, but this is a topic for later, but it- oh god, it drives me crazy. Even if the Mabari might have been cured from the Blight, there has been one known person to actually be cured, and that's Fiona. If you haven't read The Calling, the basic story is that Fiona and the other traveling Grey Wardens are unknowingly subjected to magic that accelerated the Blight, and all thanks to the Architect. During this time, Fiona and King Merritt begin a love affair, and Fiona becomes pregnant. After their adventure is over and everyone's favorite royal bastard is born, Fiona is somehow cured of the blight. It's unknown what combination of things led to her being cured. Perhaps it has something to do with Embryo Alistair, but even her being pregnant was unusual, as Grey Warden fertility rates are very low. Either way, there is a cure for the blight, but we're just not sure what it is, and hopefully our Grey Warden will be able to figure it out. 
As a side note, if you kill all of the dragons in Dragon Age Inquisition, you get a War Table mission. If you complete that mission with Liliana, you get a nice little note from Frederick of Seralt. Within the carcass of the Abyssal High Dragon, we found cysts of hardened flesh. Sister Bridget, a scholar from Navarra, said she has seen once or twice similar nodules in other beasts. To protect itself, the body grew a barrier around a foreign object that could not be removed. Naturally, of course, we cut into the cyst. The flesh within was blighted. We immediately examined all other cysts found in other dragon carcasses. Each time, we found the blight. The only conclusions we can draw is that dragons can stem the spread of the blight within their own bodies. They cannot do this indefinitely, and the existence of Corypheus dragons suggests, but they are more resistant than other creatures. So dragons somehow are able to naturally stop the blight within themselves for some time. Perhaps when the cure to the blight is found, it's going to have to revolve around dragons, and maybe that's why Yavanna is so interested in saving dragons. It's said in a legend that Kalan had there and drank the blood of dragons, and that blood has been carried down throughout generations. Perhaps that is why Fiona was cured when she became pregnant through the Theron line. And perhaps somewhere in Fiona's body are cysts that contain blighted flesh. But if this is true, then how is Alistair even a Grey Warden? Or could Alistair's body eventually cure itself? And that, honored patrons, is what we know on the blight disease. So now that the video is over, holy shit, a huge thank you to Reddit user Glinter. G Linter. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna botch this up. Uh, to those not in the know, they made a post in the Dragon Age subreddit saying some very nice things about this channel. And before that post was made, I had about 50 subscribers, which thank you to all the original 50, I guess. And as of recording this video, I have about 420. So I want to thank not only Glinter, but everyone who made such nice remarks on the Reddit posts or commented and liked on videos, PM'd me with cool video ideas and theories, or extra lore sources I didn't previously have. Those who tweeted me and followed me on Twitter, and really even you, who is either subscribed or just watching these videos for fun. The, if you're new, if you're old, either way, I really, really appreciate it. All of you guys are great, and I just want to let you know how much I genuinely appreciate your support. So do you have any lingering questions or proof that I'm wrong? Comments about your own fan theory. Feel free to tweet me at Thon on Twitter or send a PM to user Gillanon on Reddit. The rest you're all.